Welcome back to The Deep Dive. We are diving into a, a fascinating conflict today, really focusing on UiPath, that's ticker path path. Yeah. We're looking at a market leader navigating some, well, pretty brutal competition and a big strategic pivot towards AI. It's, it's quite the situation. It really is. We're unpacking what looks like a bit of a mess. UiPath is sitting on this potential gold mine of a market, but um, they're locked in a serious knife fight particularly with Microsoft. And you absolutely have to start with the market opportunity, just the sheer size of it, to really get why this fight is, well, so intense. Okay. The global RPA market robotic process automation that was estimated at around $3.8 billion this year, 2024. Right. Seems decent. But here's the thing. Projections show that figure skyrocketing. We're talking over $30.8 billion by 2030. Wow, okay, that's that's not just growth, that's explosive. Nearly an eight-fold increase. Exactly. It works out to a compound annual growth rate, a CAGR, of almost 44%. It's staggering. 44%. So that massive wave, that's the fundamental reason people are even looking at this stock, right? The investment thesis. Precisely. That potential growth, it's like a gravity well. It's pulling everything in, including all this competitive heat. Okay, so our mission today, let's keep it straightforward. We need to evaluate UiPath's big strategic pivot, this agentic automation idea. Mm -hmm. We need to synthesize the latest financial data, which is uh, a little confusing timing-wise. We've got Q3 fiscal 25 and Q2 fiscal 26 numbers. Yeah, the fiscal calendar is a bit unusual there. And then we weigh all of that against, well, the elephant in the room, Microsoft right. Power Automate, and it's, it's huge influence. It really boils down to the specialist innovator, that's UiPath, trying desperately to stay ahead of the massive ecosystem giant, Microsoft. Can that tech edge beat Microsoft's sheer distribution power? Let's dig in. Let's do it. Okay, section one. This shift to agentic automation. So UiPath, they incorporated back in 2015. For a long time, they were basically the name in high-end professional RPA. Right, the go-to for complex stuff. But they clearly know that just recording simple tasks, that's getting commoditized fast, so they seem to be trying to fundamentally transform their identity. Yeah, they want to be seen as an AI-first company, uh, focused on unifying these sophisticated AI agents, the robots, and importantly, the humans operating them. So what's really interesting is this conceptual leap they announced. It was last fall, I think, at their Forward User Conference. That's right, Forward 2024. They talked about moving beyond just RPA into what they're branding as agentic automation. Agentic automation. Okay, so what does that actually mean for you, the user, the enterprise? Well, the idea is to leverage AI agents, large language models, LLMs, to handle really complex end-to-end -end business processes, things with lots of variables. So not just automating one click, but maybe handling a whole multi-step problem by combining different AI models and tools. Exactly. It's a much broader vision. And um, to make that happen, they launched Agent Builder. Agent Builder. Right. This is a critical new tool. It's aimed squarely at the automation developers, the coders. It lets them build and deploy these sophisticated enterprise agents right on the UiPath platform. So they're making sure they keep that technical high ground with the professional developers. Absolutely. That's key to their strategy. And you see this enterprise focus reflected in their partnerships too. Right, because the data shows the large enterprise segment. That's where the biggest slice of RPA revenue was in 2024. Mm-hmm. And UiPath is definitely targeting that group. The large companies, they prioritize things like enhanced security, serious scalability, and, you know, guaranteed productivity gains. They'll pay for robustness. And the partnerships back this up? Yeah, look at the AI integrations. They integrated Anthropic's Claude 3.5 Sonnet LLM. That's a really high-performing model. Okay. It's powering new features like something called autopilot for everyone, yeah. and even a specialized solution for summarizing medical records. Interesting. Medical oh. records. Plus, there's a partnership with Inflection AI that's aimed at bringing enterprise-grade AI into industries with really high security needs. Think finance, government. And they're even getting strategic with tech giants they sort of compete with. I saw something about SAP. That's right. They integrated their platform with SAP build process automation uh, as a solution extension. Okay. It shows they understand, you know, to win in the big enterprise space, you have to be embedded. You have to play nice with the core systems customers are already using. Okay. Let's shift gears. Section two, financials. How is this strategy translating to the numbers? Right. The balance sheet. Now, like you mentioned, a word of caution for you listening. UiPath's fiscal calendar is a bit offset. So we're looking at two recent periods. There's Q3 fiscal 25, which ended way back in October 2024. Right. And then 
The more recent numbers are from Q2 fiscal 26, which actually ended July 31st, 2025. Okay, let's start with the latest then. Q2 fiscal 26, ending July 2025. What did revenue look like? Revenue came in at $361.7 million. That's up about 14% year over year. Respectable growth. And where's that growth coming from? Mostly the subscription services. They were the main driver, up uh, $43.7 million, or 22% compared to the same period the year before. Okay, 22% growth in subscriptions is strong. Now, what's the key metric they focus on? ARR. Exactly. ARR, annualized renewal run rate. That's what management uses to really manage the business day to day. As of July 31st, 2025, ARR hit $1.72 billion. $1.72 billion. Sounds good. It is solid growth, yes. But the rate of growth is slowing down a bit. That $1.72 billion represents 11% year-over-year growth. If you look back at the October 2024 number, ARR was $1.6 billion, but that was 17% growth year over year then. Ah, okay. So 17% growth down to 11% growth year over year, that deceleration is noticeable. It is. And maybe the clearest signal that, you know, something is happening competitively, you see it in the retention figures. The net retention rate. Yeah, the dollar-based net retention rate. That measures how much more your existing customers are spending year over year. It dropped. It was 115% back in July 2024. Which is healthy. It means customers were spending 15% more. Right. But by July 2025, it had fallen to 108%. 108%. Ouch. Still growing, but barely. That's quite a drop from 115. It's a significant slowdown. And honestly, that slowing retention, that's probably the clearest indicator we have that Microsoft is successfully peeling off some of that lower value expansion business. Right. So UiPath keeps the big core clients, maybe, but those clients aren't adding as many new licenses or expanding use cases as quickly as they used to. That seems to be the story the number tells. Yeah. It's because UiPath has to rely more heavily on landing massive, complex new deals rather than just growing existing accounts easily. Okay. What about efficiency margins? Well, their gap gross margin is mm-hmm. actually very impressive <laughs> and consistent. It sat at 82% in that last quarter, Q2 fiscal 26. 82% gross margin. So the core product itself is highly profitable. Extremely. And remember, they did that workforce restructuring earlier in fiscal 2025. Mm-hmm. That was clearly aimed at protecting or even boosting those margins. But did it work? Where did the cuts happen? It definitely showed up in sales and marketing. Yeah. Those expenses dropped significantly 14% year over year in Q2 26. 14% cut in s and That's big. It was substantial, primarily driven by about $30.7 million in lower personnel costs. Yeah. Fewer heads, lower commissions, maybe termination benefits rolling off. Okay, that makes sense if you're trying to boost efficiency. But what about R&D? Did they cut there too? Ah, uh, that's the interesting part. No. Yes. Research and development expenses basically remained constant year over year. Constant, even with the restructuring. Why protect R&D like that? Because look, their entire future hinges on this AI pivot we were just talking about, agentic automation. Right. Section one. They seem to be consciously sacrificing some near-term sales capacity, hence the s and cuts, to fully fund the development of that next-gen platform. They know if they lose the technical edge, especially to Microsoft, well, that's the whole ballgame. That's a strategic bet right there. Protect the innovation engine at all costs. Yes. Okay, last piece on financials. Liquidity. Cash. They're sitting on a very strong cash position. As of July 2025, they had $1.52 billion in cash, equivalents, and marketable securities. $1.5 billion. Plenty of runway. Definitely. However, you should note, they have been using a significant chunk of that cash on share buybacks. Oh, how much? In just the first six months of that fiscal year, ending July 31st, 2025, they spent $329.1 million repurchasing their own Class A common stock. That was under a $500 million authorization. Okay, so almost $330 million deployed on buybacks in six months. That's pretty aggressive. Right. So to understand maybe why that retention rate is slipping and why they might feel pressure on the stock price leading to buybacks, we have to move from the spreadsheet to the trenches. Uh, What are developers actually saying about UiPath versus Microsoft Power Automate? Okay. The competitive reality. What's the word on the street? Well, the first thing everyone says is Power Automate is, and I quote one source, so much cheaper than UiPath. So much cheaper. That's blunt. It is. And that's a massive advantage for Microsoft, obviously. Plus, Power Automate is already baked into everything else Microsoft sells. Right, the ecosystem. Microsoft 365, Azure, Dataverse. 
it creates this uh, this walled garden that's really convenient and sticky for companies already deep in Microsoft's world. Very hard to ignore if you're already paying for M365. Yeah. But the sources we looked at also have a really strong counter argument. This comes from experienced RPA developers, the folks actually building complex automations. And what do they say? They maintain that UiPath is still fundamentally the superior product. It's a more complete package, especially for complex, truly production-ready use cases. Do they give examples, or is it just a feeling? Oh, no. Specific technical examples. Like, a developer might need to string together four or five separate actions in Power Automate just to replicate what is a single standard action in UiPath. Okay, so more development effort needed on the Power Automate side for the same outcome sometimes. Potentially, yes. Yeah. And apparently, PA can struggle significantly once you step outside that comfortable Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Like what? Developers mentioned problems handling uh, complex LINQ queries, which is a data query thing, or dealing with non-Office Excel files, XLSX files running inside virtual machines, even accessing older email systems using POP3, stuff that UiPath handles routinely. So the plumbing is maybe less robust outside the Microsoft suite? That's the argument. And specifically, UiPath's unattended bots, the ones running complex processes 24-7 without human intervention, those are described as being significantly more robust and reliable in demanding production environments. Okay. So maybe Power Automate is seen as good enough for simpler tasks, maybe departmental automation, but not quite ready for prime time for mission-critical core business processes. That seems to be the developer consensus, yes. Good enough versus truly enterprise-grade. So this brings us right back to the decision maker's desk, probably the CFO. It sounds like a classic ROI versus upfront cost debate. Exactly. For the really big companies, the ones running processes that generate huge returns, one source mentioned, processes pumping out anywhere from $100,000 to $2 million annually. For them, the high UiPath license fee is, and this was another direct quote, a rounding error. A rounding error. Okay, if your automation saves you a million bucks a year, paying, say... 50000 for the license. Yeah, I can see that. They care about the output, the reliability, maximizing that huge ROI from complex automation. The license cost is secondary. It reframes the pricing completely. They're not just selling software. They're selling guaranteed, measurable, large-scale returns. That's the pitch. Mm. But then you have the other camp. The cost cutters. Right. Other companies, maybe under more pressure, strictly focused on reducing expenses right now. They are migrating or choosing not to expand with UiPath and instead going with cheaper platforms like Power Automate. Even if it makes the technical teams work harder or introduces complexity down the line? Apparently so, in some cases. Yeah. That lure of the low integrated cost, especially within the existing Microsoft agreement, that's a massive factor. And that's likely what's driving that drop in the net retention rate we talked about. Okay, so we've got this incredible market growth, UiPath pivoting hard to AI with agentic automation. They're managing cost but protecting R&D, but fighting this ferocious battle with Microsoft Power Automate. Given all that complexity, how is Wall Street actually viewing UiPath stock right now? Well, the analyst consensus, as of early October 2025, it's, uh, it's pretty telling. The overall rating is hold. Hold. Not buy, not sell. Just hold. Exactly. That rating comes from 18 analysts covering the stock. 12 of them say hold. Only three have a buy or strong buy. And interestingly, three recommend sell. Okay, so heavily weighted towards hold with a few outliers on either side. What about price targets? The average 12-month price target among those analysts is $13.21. $13.21? And where was the stock trading recently when we pulled this? Around $14.63. That's right. So the average analyst target actually implies a potential downside from the recent price, hmm. about 9.7% downside. Hmm. So analysts are, on average, predicting the stock might fall nearly 10% over the next year. That definitely aligns with a hold or even cautious stance. Yeah. And it means the stock is being rated less favorably than the average company in the broader computer and technology sector. UiPath's consensus score is lower than the sector average. And that caution isn't just about the Microsoft competition, is it? There are other risks swirling around. No, it's definitely not just Microsoft. UiPath is simultaneously juggling some significant uh, material, legal, and tax headwinds. And these introduce real volatility into the whole valuation story. Okay, let's quickly run through those risks. What are we looking at legally? They're currently facing two active putative class action lawsuits. One filed in 2023, another in 2024. Putative, meaning the class hasn't been formally certified yet, but the suits exist. Correct. Both lawsuits allege that the company made material misstatements or omissions, 
basically misleading investors yeah. about the competitive position and their financial results. Okay. Any provisions made? Do they expect to lose? According to their filings, no loss has been accrued because they deem it neither probable nor reliably estimable at this stage. But still, these things are a major management distraction and create uncertainty. Right. And then there are tax issues. You mentioned international. Yes, significant tax uncertainty, particularly in foreign jurisdictions. In Romania, their subsidiary got hit with a $14.3 million value-added tax assessment. They paid it already, but they are appealing the decision. $14.3 million paid, but under appeal. Okay. okay. Any others? There's a potentially larger one brewing in India. Their Indian subsidiary is currently undergoing a goods and services tax GST inspection. And the preliminary inquiry amount mentioned is $45.6 million. Wow, $45.6 million. That's that's not insignificant, especially compared to their quarterly revenue or operating income. Exactly. To put that $45.6 million into context, it's a substantial potential liability. It's preliminary, not finalized, but it represents a real risk hanging over them, adding to the uncertainty. So these international tax issues, plus the lawsuits, they definitely add layers of risk beyond just the market competition. Absolutely. And on top of all that, you just have the broader market climate. The stock's performance is also just susceptible to macroeconomic worries, right? Inflation data, interest rate concerns. These things can pull down the whole tech sector, regardless of UiPath's specific execution. Okay, so let's try and tie this all together. We've looked at a company, UiPath, that is arguably the technical leader in a market that's projected to just explode, maybe grow eightfold in the next six years. Right. Undisputed technical leader in a booming space. They're proactively shifting strategy to this agentic automation, trying to stay ahead. They're maintaining high R&D spending to keep that critical edge, funding it partly through cuts elsewhere. A clear strategic choice there. But... At the same time, they are fighting the ultimate integrated powerhouse, Microsoft. They're managing the internal friction from a big workforce restructuring, and they're juggling these significant legal and international tax risks. It's a lot of moving parts, a lot of pressure points. And that intense friction, that complexity, that probably explains why the current signal from Wall Street is cautious. It's hold. It makes sense. The potential is huge, but the risks and competition are equally significant. Now, before we wrap up, let's circle back to one really fascinating financial detail. It's a bit technical, but it could potentially be a huge game changer for the valuation story. Okay. What is it? It's about their U.S. deferred tax assets, DTAs. Deferred tax assets, right. These are basically future tax benefits from past losses or credits. Exactly. Things the company believes they will eventually be able to use to reduce future tax bills. But currently, UiPath maintains a full valuation allowance against these U.S. DTAs. A valuation allowance means they can't actually recognize that potential future benefit on their balance sheet right now. Correct. Yeah. Like the accountants aren't sure enough they'll be profitable enough in the U.S. to use them. Precisely. It's an accounting measure reflecting uncertainty about future profitability. Uh -huh. But here's the kicker. Management explicitly stated in the recent filings that they believe there is a reasonable possibility. <laughs> that sufficient positive evidence, like sustained profitability, might become available within the next six months to conclude that this valuation allowance is no longer needed. Within six months. So what happens if they release that valuation allowance? If they release it, it would result in the immediate recognition of that DTA on the balance sheet. And crucially, it would flow through the income statement as a potentially significant non-cash income tax benefit. It could make one quarter's earnings look suddenly very, very good. Ah, a sudden large boost to reported net income, even if it's just an accounting change related to future tax expectations. Exactly. So here's the final thought, the question for you to mull over. Given that massive market growth potential we started with. Right, the 44% CAGR. Given the relentless competition from Microsoft, mm. and now knowing about this possibility of a significant DTA release hitting the books, potentially quite soon. Maybe offsetting some bad news like that potential $45.6 million tax hit in India. Maybe. How much of a game changer would that specific tax event, that DTA release, actually be for the overall valuation story? Does it fundamentally change the narrative, or is it just an accounting adjustment against much larger operational headwinds? That is a complex question. Which side of that accounting ledger, the potential tax benefit versus the potential tax liability and competitive pressure, will ultimately tip the scales for UiPath's immediate future? That's what you need to be thinking about if you're looking at UiPath today. We'll leave you to think on that one. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. We catch you next time.